Good day. This is the sample problem 14 for a strain and this is our second sample problem for thermal stress. I will read the problem first. The 4 feet long rigid bar ABC with uniform weight of 50 feet per foot is pinned at A and supported by a steel cable at B. There is also a 1 inch cylindrical rod at C. However, initially, there exists a 0.2 inch gap between the rod and bar. Determine the minimum temperature change in the assembly such that the steel cable will be stress free. Also, what is the resulting stress in the aluminum rod? Okay. So for this problem, um, both material, the steel cable and the aluminum rod, are subjected to a change in temperature and also the force brought about by the weight of member ABC. As you can see in the figure, there is no external load that can be seen, but it, the load would actually come from the weight of bar ABC. So actually, the steel cable and the aluminum rod will experience two different forces. One force that they will both experience is because of the 50 k per foot uh, weight of the bar ABC. And then the other force that they would be experiencing would be brought about by the thermal stress that is brought about by the change in the temperature. Okay. Take note that this thermal stress and the corresponding deformation of both the steel cable and the aluminum rod due to this thermal stress is different from the deformation alpha L naught delta T that we are computing when the temperature is changing. Again, why the, we have thermal stress in this problem? Of course, because the steel cable, once the bar ABC will uh, move or will rotate and the gap of 0.2 inch will close, the aluminum rod will affect whatever deformation the steel cable has. So, for example, if the steel cable will elongate, the bar AB, due to temperature, bar ABC would rotate counterclockwise, hitting the aluminum rod, which will, which will give a compressive force on the aluminum rod. Also, when the aluminum rod will elong if the aluminum rod elongates, it will also hit bar ABC, causing bar ABC to tilt counterclockwise, giving the steel cable a compressive force. So that brings about the thermal stress component in this problem. Let's solve the problem. So what would, let's analyze first what will happen to the rod. Of course, to the rods, keep in mind that it is stipulated in the problem that the steel cable will be stress-free. We are actually looking for the temperature change or the minimum temperature that will lead to a stress-free steel cable. So again, two things uh, happen to the both cables. First, they are subjected to the 50 k per foot weight of bar ABC. So what will it do? How will it affect the steel cable and the aluminum rod? Okay. So, the 50 k foot weight uh, will make bar ABC rotate counterclockwise, rather, sorry, about A. So, when bar ABC rotates counterclockwise about A, the steel cable will elongate, giving a tensile force on the cable. And if the gap is closed, the aluminum rod will be compressed. Now, we are asked for the temperature change. So, of course, we know that there would be two types of temperature changes, increase in temperature and decrease in temperature, What, which will bring about a stress-free steel cable. 
Again, please note that the tension in the, the, the force, the 50 kip per foot weight, gives you a tension on the steel cable. So let us examine what will happen if the temperature increases. As I've said earlier, if the temperature increases, the steel cable will elongate and bar ABC will rotate clockwise, compressing the aluminum rod. The aluminum rod will also elongate and that will compress your steel cable. So, compressive stress on both. That would be our thermal stress. Take note again, because of the temperature change, both cables will elongate, but there would be a compressive stress on both. Of course, the compressive stress will bring about shortening in the cable. It may be the case that uh, the net... Um, Deformation in both, in the cable and the aluminum rod, is still elongation. But there is definitely a compressive stress on both. Now, if we consider a decrease in temperature, let me erase this first. What if the temperature decreases? The steel cable will shorten. The aluminum rod will also shorten. Hence, bar C will not touch on the aluminum rod and the steel cable will not incur a thermal stress because the bar will not touch the, the bar ABC will not touch the aluminum rod. So, no stress on the steel cable, no stress as well on the aluminum rod if there is a decrease in temperature because they will not touch. So, since the problem stipulates a stress-free steel cable, what would more likely occur to give us that condition? An increase in temp or a decrease in temp? So take note that initially you have a tensile force on the steel cable because of the 50 kip per foot weight. For the cable to be stress-free, you have to negate that tensile force. What would negate that tensile force? The compressive stress brought about by the increase in temperature. If we decrease the temperature, since the steel cable will not feel any stress, the tensile stress brought about by the weight will not be negated. Hence, we would not get a stress-free steel cable if we decrease the temperature of the body. Okay. So now, firstly, some of you... Uh, are thinking is the gap will the gap be closed so how will we check if the gap will be closed in this problem so of course we draw the FPD of the bar this is the weight 50 times 4 and we take note first that F we have a value for F steel we do not check first the effect of temperature here take note that I will not put a force here for the aluminum because uh, we are under the assumption that the bar will not, that the gap will not be closed. So we saw moment at A, we get, uh, this should be F steel. I'm sorry, so this should be F steel. This should be for steel. And we use this force, the 400 kip force. Uh, to get the deformation of steel, which we solved to be 5.2686 inches. So in our deformation diagram, again, uh, the bar will rotate clockwise. This would be our deformation in the steel bar. This would be the deflection of 
the rightmost end of the bar. We use our similar triangles to get Y. Y is 21.074 inches. It's, of course, very, very much larger than the gap. Hence, the gap will be closed. So, this uh, part of the problem is actually optional. Uh, most of our problems, especially the design problems, will be designed such that the, any gap that is given in the problem will be closed. So now, I, there, should, there are actually two solutions to the problem, two ways of going about this problem. First, the first way and more often used in uh, ES13 is to consider the effect of the force and the temperature simultaneously. The other one is to consider them separately. Why do we always uh, use the simultaneous uh, analysis of the force and temperature? Because it's easier, it's a shorter solution. I will try to provide you a solution for when you consider the effects of the force, the applied force, and the temperature separately. But not in this video because it's a very long solution. So now... We consider the effect of the force, the 50 k per foot uh, weight, and the temperature simultaneously. So again, uh, when we consider them simultaneously, take note na we already have steel to be zero. It means that uh, we are both considering the, the tension force uh, for the from the 50 kip load and then the compressive force due to temperature zero na yung force sa steel and now since we proved that the gap will be closed we now put a force for aluminum and the force for aluminum should always be compressive because the bar will just be in contact with aluminum it will not pull on the aluminum okay and also, when we sum moment at A, the force in aluminum should be really upwards for it to uh, be in equilibrium with the 200 kip force. So again, summing moment at A, you get F aluminum equal to 100 kips. And since one of the questions in this problem is to compute for the stress in aluminum, we compute for the stress in aluminum readily. So again, keep in mind when you read in the problem that a material is stress-free, believe the problem. And since the material is stress-free, the net force in the material would be zero. Okay? Now, we want to find the temperature. We are not going to find the temperature from the FVD because there's no temperature component in our FVD. So we have to draw our deformation diagram. So take note again, what you have to remember in drawing the deformation diagram is to remember what happens in the material. There is an increase in temperature, so we expect both materials to elongate and then Remember that in the FBT, steel has no force while aluminum has a compressive force. So this is the initial position of your rigid bar as well as your aluminum bar. I did not draw the steel rod anymore. So this is our first assumption. We assume that the bar will rotate clockwise. Uh, the, in, the, in this first deformation diagram, I assumed na, that the, the rightmost end of the bar here will uh, be below the, or the initial position of my aluminum, the free end of the aluminum bar. I will show you another deformation diagram that uh, assumes the other way around. Okay. So we now input the deformation. For steel, 
only one deformation needs to be in the deformation diagram and that would be uh, that of the temperature elongation the elongation due to temperature of steel since steel is stress free so steel elongated because of temperature now for the aluminum rod you have two effects temperature increased so the aluminum rod will elongate but it also felt a compressive force so we have to incorporate that in our deformation diagram so i just labeled h because i would be using h in the similar triangles equation the ratio and proportion so first here this is our deformation due to force again Aluminum is compressed, hence, we, as we see indicated in the arrow, aluminum will be compressed. Again, the length of the arrow uh, is arbitrary, but in this case, uh, take note that the tail of the arrow coincided with the free end or the initial position of the free end of the aluminum and I have to uh, draw the arrow past the final position of the aluminum rod, the free, on, free end of the aluminum rod that I assumed. Mainly because I have to incorporate that the change in temperature brought about a elongation of the material okay so if what if uh, the temperature is decreased so dapat pag ganyan yung arrow ko ng force ay hindi lalampas doon sa final position na inasum ko para yung sa temperature ay pa-exceed rin. Ganyan. Kung, yan ay kung nag-decrease ang temperature. Pero dahil nag-increase ang ating temperature, ito lang, dahil nag-increase ang ating temperature, kailangan nakalampas yung deformation ko due to force dun sa final position para maidodrawing ko na humaba si aluminum dahil sa temperature para makaabot siya dun sa sinet natin na final position. Okay? So that's how you incorporate the, the uh, directions of the forces na nilagay natin sa FBD. And also the temperature increase or decrease. So how to formulate the compatibility equation. So again, the distance between the initial position of the free end of aluminum and the final position of the free end of aluminum is delta P aluminum minus delta T aluminum. And then this space here is equal to the gap. So our similar triangles Delta T for steel all over 1 is equal to H over 4. Again, because this is 1 here and the whole length of the bar is 4. And that would be equal to the gap, this, this space over here, which is the gap, plus delta P aluminum minus delta T aluminum all over 4. We substitute all our values given in the problem, in the equation, and we get our delta T to be 757.708 degrees Celsius increase in temperature. That would be the minimum temperature that will bring about a stress-free steel. Okay. So, how about if I consider na hindi lumampas kay aluminum 
yung final position, nandun lang siya sa middle of the gap. Paano yung magiging diagram ko dyan? At makangakuha ba ako ng same equation? So, for steel, ganun pa rin siya. Delta T ng steel lang ang ilalagay natin kasi stress-free naman si steel. And then for, and then medyo magbabago yung ating isi similar triangle na length na H. Nandito na siya. Mas lumiit siya kaysa kanina. Tapos, ganun pa rin si aluminum ay na-compress. So, pababa yung ating arrow. Ibig sabihin, umikse si aluminum. Again, do, ang arrow natin nagsimula pa rin sa initial position ni aluminum, nung free end ni aluminum, arbitrary length. Tapos, kailangan niyang humaba. Yung aluminum ay hahaba para maabot niya yung inassume natin na final position. Okay? So, paano na ang ating similar triangles? So, yung difference ng initial position ni aluminum at ng final position ni aluminum, ito, ay delta T aluminum minus delta P aluminum. So, baliktad kesa dun sa kanina. And our equation now would be yung similar triangles natin, ganun pa rin. Delta T steel over 1 is equal to H over 4. Pero ito yung nabago. Yung H natin ngayon ay mas malaki na yung gap kesa sa H. Kanina mas malaki yung H kesa sa gap. So, H is gap minus delta T minus delta P for aluminum. But take note na ito yung equation natin kanina, pareho lang sila. Kasi pagka dinistribute na natin yung negative sign na ito, this one, kay delta T at kay delta P, ito pa rin equation na ito yung lalabas. So, okay lang kahit i-assume ninyo na yung final position e eh nasa gitna ng gap o nasa lampas ng gap. Pareho pa rin ng mahukuhang equation. Okay. So, paano naman kung in-assume ninyo na clockwise, counterclockwise, rather, yung rotation ng bar. Take note na kung increase in temperature ang gusto nyong mangyari, nandito kasi si steel, di ba? Ayan, nandiyan si steel. Kung increase in temperature ang gusto nyong mangyari, hindi pwedeng ganyan yung maging final position ng inyong rigid bar. Kasi ibig sabihin yan, iikse si steel para makarating dyan. So, hindi pwedeng nag-increase ang temperature. Dapat humaba si steel kung nag-increase ang temperature. So, paano kung hindi natin na-analyze yung kagaya dun sa unang slide or actually the second slide that I discussed, Paano kung hindi natin na-analyze na kailangan increase yung temperature? Paano kung inisip natin na nag-decrease pala yung temperature? So, okay, pwede to. Si steel ay umikse due to temperature. Ito yan. Paano naman si aluminum? Si aluminum ay umikse due to temperature. So, papunta dito yung deformation niya, pababa. Tapos, due to force, na-compress siya. So, pababa pa rin dapat yun. Umiksi siya. Hindi natin naabot yung dapat na in natin na final position ni aluminum. So, hindi pwedeng ganyan yung maging assumption natin. So, I just presented the alternate uh, assumptions to you para lang if maisip nyo, na, hindi nyo naman ma-analyze agad-agad yung problem kung marunong tayong mag-draw ng deformation diagram at marunong tayong mag-incorporate ng mga concepts natin sa deformation diagram 
malalaman natin na mali yung ginagawa nating deformation diagram. Okay? That's all. Of course, if you have any questions regarding the videos that I uploaded, feel free to consult with me. Thank you.